Once upon a time, amidst the Siev and Straw, long, long ago, there lived a people in the lands of present-day Turkey. This people referred to themselves as the Solimos, the people of Termesos. The morning birds chirping, the rising sunlight, the mist forming on the slopes of Solimos. Everyone woke up from their slumber. It was time to go to the Agora. Today was going to be a beautiful day. First, I will meet with Sam Sisi, then with my beloved. Towards evening, I will sit in the theater. I will drink wine, to cheer up. Termesos woke up as usual, it seemed, the people of Solimos. Just like every day, they thought today would be the same and beautiful day. However, from distant lands, an army crossing the Hellespont could be heard slowly, in the lands of Solimos, with drum beats and war cries. The news had come beforehand, preparations had been made. But mankind does not want to think of the worst. But on a new day, today, the inevitability of war, thoughts and worries suddenly arose in minds. Forty thousand infantry and seven thousand cavalry hitting the new lands they had never seen, never come to before, with their sandals. Some were in the army for loot, for glory, some for new stories, adventures. Some hearts were burning for those they left behind, some had nothing left to lose anymore. These young old men, newborn babies, courtesans, slaves, soldiers, generals, commanders, scouts, cooks, all were advancing towards their unknown destinies on the lands they stepped on. A large part of the army, marching towards the cities of Xanthos, Latoon, Patara, Phasalus to the south with Alexander, while another part, as always, advanced north with envoys to say, Surrender, do not fight with us before the battle. Having taken every city he had seen, heard of, passed through until now, King Alexander III, or Alexander the Great and his staff, were sure that they might take this city of Termesos without even fighting. Therefore, the army, divided into two, would march north to take Termesos, then descend to Perga and reunite. And the conquest of Asia would continue where it left off. Who dares to challenge the Solemn citizens? Who dares to defy? There was an unfamiliar name echoing in the ears, Alexander III. A great army and these people who called themselves Helen. Thus spoke the people of Termesos, young warriors, women, gray-haired elders to each other. Alexander was surprised by the news that came in Perga. Termesos was not surrendering, not giving up the city. The people of Perga, telling Alexander that the city was very rich, asked him to make sure that Termesos got its share of this conquest. The route was now north. Alexander would personally join the expedition and head north. And so it happened. The army tied their sandals, stood in formation, and took the marching position. The war trumpet sounded, giving the command forward to the men, to the Hellenes. On the defense walls of Termesos, which touched the clouds thousands of meters above sea level, archers, along with their platoon commanders, had taken their positions. Passages were blocked, stones to be thrown down were prepared. Men outside the city walls had been summoned to the city with messengers and horns, and they had already obeyed the command to take up arms. In haste, everything outside the wall was taken into the city. Units were formed at critical points in the city, and the Termesos army took their positions for battle as quickly as they could. Women and children who could not fight withdrew to safe places, shelters. The remaining people took whatever was left of swords, spears, bows, stones, and slingshots in their hands. Time. 
In those years when the struggle for survival was most intense, in the short human life, the goal was to live a little longer, to love, to be able to satisfy their loved ones. There's no turning back now. We will either fight or die, shouted the commanders on the walls at the gates in the passageway. Who wakes up in the morning before the sun has risen, thinking of entering a battle? Termesos had enough water, food, and drink for months. The reason was, as many historians also stated, the city's strategic location being in the heart of the region. Cisterns, channels that collected rainwater at the top, and the fertile region were the resources that sufficed for Termesos. At an altitude of 1,150 meters above sea level, in the southwest valley of Mount Solimos, the city was founded by the Solom people, who were descendants of the Lycians, the oldest people of Anatolia. The double S in its name, like the names on its graves, gives us many examples of this light. Arianos, a historian about Termesos, says, Due to the impenetrable natural obstacles, such as the 800 meters deep gorge to the south, the city can be defended even with a small unit. At the same time, many wild plants, dense pine forests, and tremendous cliffs around seem to say, Stop! to the foreigners coming from outside Termesos, as if not wanting to let them through. Like the city of Troy holding the strait, Termesos held the road from Pamphylia to Phrygia. Cities, throughout history, were established in such strategic locations to make money, live better, and thus create trade routes to keep these places safe. This was the case with Termesos. And for the first time in history, the city appeared before us with Alexander's siege. Impassable Passages The Call of Hades the Macedonian forces had a national spirit. With unusual combinations for the world of its time, tactical maneuverability, equipment durability and superiority, the army, thanks to material investment and time spent, bestowed honors, glory and service rewards, had become professional units. This revolution in the army had hardly been realized thanks to the innovative and political initiatives of Philip II, Alexander's father. The cream of the crop was left to Alexander, the heir to the throne, to enjoy. According to the historian of the Hellenic era, Diodorus Siculus, the army consisted of 47,000, 55,000 mandatory Macedonian soldiers, 10,000, 12,000 Hellenic units, that is, Greek Union mandatory soldiers, 5,000, 7,000 mercenaries, 2,000, 5,000 Greek hoplites, total 64,000 to 79,000 soldiers. At least that's what Diodorus said. The most overwhelming unity of the army was the hoplites, who wielded a spear between three and six meters long. These units, fighting in a phalanx formation, fought shoulder to shoulder, side by side, in tight ranks, and undertook the task of sending the enemy forces in the shortest way to Hades with their long spears and tight ranks. Thanks to this power, Alexander and his army were excessively confident, yet well-educated not to be foolish, and with his intelligence, he pursued the fame he deserved. Finally, this army had come to the Termesos Passes. There were lower passages leading north to Phrygia, but Alexander had chosen this steep, most difficult passage. The reason for this was probably Per's guidance of Alexander to the Termesos Passes. The army had entered the passes. The siege had begun. The people of Termesos, who were defending relentlessly from the passes, achieved a tremendous success, providing appropriate support to their archers and army by throwing down whatever they could get their hands on, stones, spears, clubs, from the city walls. Termesos' units, which were safer and had the advantage, made a relentless reception to the Macedonian units that could not reach them, because of the rugged and steep, wooded and unseen depths of the geography, forces that could provide advantages such as various engineering war machines, war chariots and cavalry units could not be used. Thus, Termesos, which lasted for a long time, 
knew that it could not exhaust its stocks all at once and that it would lose many soldiers, and Alexander, who could not afford to waste his time here, finally decided to lift the siege. The passes could not be taken. Alexander, with his sudden decision, left Termesos and set out on the northern road. Here, he seized the neighboring city of Sagalassos in a rush and took out his anger on Sagalassos. History is an endless tide. After Alexander's sudden death, the vast lands he left behind were divided among his successors, that is, his generals. One of his generals, Antigonus Monophthalmus, known in history as One-Eyed Antigonus, had served as the satrap of Phrygia during Alexander's time, and after the king's death, he established his own kingdom in Anatolia as his successor. The One-Eyed King, having gone on the Asian campaigns with Alexander, had seen countless different peoples fought with various armies. This led him to leave elephants, which he met during Alexander's Asian campaign and later used in his army as a legacy to his own army. Thus, his army consisted of 40,000 infantry, 7,000 cavalry, and elephants. Alcetas, on the other hand, either with honor or due to impossibility, after a glorious battle on horseback, avoiding a great defeat, took refuge in Termesos with his staff and remaining men. At first, the people of Termesos promised to help them. But when Antigonus, approaching the city gates with his army, demanded that his enemy Alcetas be handed over to him, the elders of the city told him that they would not destroy the city for a foreign general who was not from Termesos, and that the best decision was to hand over Alcetas, who had taken refuge with them, to Antigonus. But the young warriors of Termesos said that they would not break their oath to Alcetas and would not compromise their honor and warrior spirit, and that they would fight. The elders secretly sent messengers to Antigonus and asked him to lift the siege if they handed over Alcetas. When the young warriors of Termesos returned to the city and learned what had happened, they were deeply saddened, gathered the pieces of the body, performed the funeral ceremony, and buried him. In his memory, they erected a monument. Throughout history until today, Termesos, which has seen earthquakes, sieges, invasions, still stands strong today. And the city that Alexander cursed goes down in history as the city that Alexander could not take, could not seize. A new day, as the sun rises from the east in the warm spring air, or in the harsh winter season when raindrops dance in the Mediterranean, you can visit the city. You will be greeted by lush green flowers. The residents of Solomos will say to you, Welcome visitor, this is the great city of Termesos, which the great conqueror Alexander could not conquer, as they walk beside you, watching you. Generations, thousands of years later, will look at how their ancestors once walked around the city that was once their own. Even if you don't see them, when you touch the stones, you can feel the spirit of history, the feelings of the slave who once carved it out of the quarry, the breaths of the master who shaped it, the hammer sounds if you listen carefully enough, you can hear them. Termesos. Today, it is located 30 kilometers northwest of Antalya, on the road to Korkuteli. With its dazzling natural and historical richness, the city has been included in its own national park. With history, with love, stay well. Goodbye.